so controversial shootings, um, also some very interesting commentary, some reaction in the wake of the Derek Chauvin guilty verdicts. Before we get to that, I'd like to get your thoughts on uh, Micaiah Bryant. Just, I mean, what, 20 minutes before the guilty verdicts were read in open court, she was shot and killed by police in Columbus, Ohio. We couldn't even revel in the joy courtesy of accountability before hearing about another black life loss. So give me your thoughts. Well, you know, I've been following uh, this case all day long. I've been looking at uh, the various opinions. You know, the opinions go across the board. You know, there are some folks that say uh, that it was justifiable because she did have a knife. And according to administrative policy, it says that if someone, a third party, uh, is in uh, danger, uh, then the officer has uh, the right uh, to, uh, I guess, I don't want to even say kill, but the right to, uh, you know, definitely do uh, use of force, deadly use of force. However, you know, the the issue is police cult culture as a whole. It is not just about this one case. Um, every case is different. The issue is that m the people are finding an issue is, is why is it when police are responding to issues in the black community that the result is different? When issues are being responded to the white community, we just saw in Minnesota just last week during this trial where a white guy drove off in a truck with a police officer on the side of the truck, literally hanging on the truck, but yet somehow he was able to go home to his family alive. This is the issue of police culture. We understand the policies that are in place. We understand the laws that are in place. But even with that, they respond differently to us. And what I tell people is, if they have an issue with this case, because everyone is not uh, going to be in support of this case, and guess what, yo, D, pick one. Pick a case that works for you then to advocate for it, because there's certainly more than enough. If this doesn't work, then talk about Pamela Turner, who was executed without a knife in her hand. If this case doesn't work, then talk about Dante Wright, who we clearly know uh, that officer knew the difference between a taser and a gun. So a lot of folks are, are trying to nitpick this case apart, advocating for any case at all. And so this goes back again to the police culture and how do we change it so that our responses are different uh, when they arrive to the scene uh, in our neighborhoods. Yeah, add a Tatiana Jefferson who was hanging out with her nephew um, at home. Add Breonna Taylor who was just at home minding her business to sleep in bed when she got a knock at the door. So you're absolutely correct. And I think we also need to be very cautious about how we advocate for our own community as well when we try to argue that say, well, no, uh, Breonna Taylor was asleep in her bed. She didn't have to be. These individuals don't have to be these perfect victims, right, in order for us to advocate. Even, even if someone has uh, drugs or alcohol in their system, if someone has a knife, does that warrant a death sentence? All right, next question. What do you make of the usual suspects talking about the knife Micaiah was holding at the time police arrived, who only came due to the call Micaiah placed herself? So this is, again, you spoke to the issue of if an officer felt threatened, was the knife even being wielded in the, the officer's direction? Well, you know, according to the report, I, I, and again, this is still early in the case, so I do, you know, want to allow at least more facts to come out. But according uh, to what I have read, he believed that the young lady in the pink uh, jumpsuit, uh, her life was at risk. Uh, and we certainly don't want to minimize uh, that as well. We certainly know that her life is also important. But again, when we're talking about a grown man uh, and, uh, against a 16-year-old girl, could he have tackled her? Could he have knocked her down? Could he have tased her? There are many other ways uh, to bring someone down, uh, you know, other than shooting her four times. So again, it's the quick response, the quick to judgment. And the first, uh, it seems like it's always the first thing to do is to shoot and ask questions later. Um, but I would say, you know, mm -hmm. you know, the black community is having a, a conversation about this uh, that is different. But that is also mixed with the triggering of this happening during uh, the, the, the George Floyd, the Derek Chauvin case. Uh, so right now, you know, people are triggered and, and they're feeling, you know, some type of way about police culture. So this is a yeah. conversation that I think we need to have, even for those that disagree. All right, let's take it back to the moments after we heard of the guilty verdicts against Derek Chauvin. Nancy Pelosi, the woman who has knelt, who has wear, uh, worn kente cloth, <laughs> made some interesting comments following the news. Let's take a listen, and I'm sure you're going to have some thoughts on the back end. Thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice, for being there to call out to your mom 
How, how heartbreaking was that? Call out for your mom. I can't breathe. But because of you and because of thousands, millions of people around the world who came out for justice, your name will always be synonymous with justice. Teslin, she said, thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice. Now, then she tweeted, I think, in an effort to maybe clean this up a bit. Um, what, are your, what were your thoughts when you first heard her comments? Well, first of all, it's the nodding in the background for me uh, with the Congressional Black Caucus. I'm going to need them to stop <laughs> nodding the foolish. Uh, second, Madam Speaker, uh, black folks are done being sacrificial <laughs> lambs, ramming the bushes, holding our mules, and any other you know clever Negro spiritual comment uh, that she can feel is appropriate. This was completely inappropriate. It's time to start. Let's start making more examples out of these police officers. Only seven police officers have been convicted and since 2005 in over 2,000 police brutality cases. Just last year alone, over $2 billion was settled in police brutality cases. So this is an issue, and it's time to start making them a few more sacrificial lambs like Derek Chauvin. You know, let's see if a few more of those folks can come forward and be held accountable. So she's getting the sacrifice all twisted. Black folks have sacrificed enough since the inception of this country with it being enslaved, with Jim Crow, with sharecropping, uh, with mass incarceration, with police brutality, with the KKK, with being hung, the list goes on. We've done enough sacrifices. Let's go ahead and start implementing some consequences for the decisions uh, that folks are making uh, who, are, who are racist and believe in white supremacy. 